Hey guys, Mike with Professional Awesome. So today we're gonna to talk about um, our splitter support rods that we recently released. Um, we wanna make a video basically two reasons. One, we want some instructions on how to tighten these and how to use these um, to their best effectiveness. And also we wanted to tell you why we did what we did. So we're gonna have more videos on why we choose the path we choose in terms of engineering or otherwise, why we choose the parts on the cars, those types of things. So we wanna explain why we did what we did with these splitter supports because they are a little different than what's on the market. So a splitter support obviously does um, one main job, which is to hold the splitter up from the downforce that is created. Now, that's a, a pretty easy job to do. You could do it with a couple of different things. You could do it with turnbuckles, which a lot of people use, or cables. Um, and in our case, we wanted to do something a little bit different because there's a couple problems that we saw with, with the traditional available options for um, splitter support rods. So with a turnbuckle, um, those are rigid supports, which are good generally until you smack them on the ground. And generally that turnbuckle is really strong and it won't bend and it won't deflect. And what happens is the actual mounting locations or bolts going through the splitter actually deflect and it can ruin your splitter. The other thing um, that can happen uh, is you could use something like a cable. Well, a cable is great as well for deflection, but what it's not good for is um, porpoising or the splitter causing downforce and then some kind of vibration when the splitter is close to the ground. So in some cases, if the splitter isn't completely rigid on its own and the splitter starts to dip from downforce getting close to the ground, it can actually pull down and then release and pull down and release. And when it does that, the splitter, the splitter edge will flutter. And so what these um, splitter support rods are designed to do is basically fix all those problems, give you the best of all worlds. Um, the adjustability, the rigidness, but also the little bit of flexibility you need if you ever run it into something. And let's be serious, we all run it into stuff. So we decided to use something that is strong, extremely strong in tension, but has some flexibility to it. And that is a continuous stranded carbon graphene rod. So these are, uh, if you look on the end, you'll see little carbon tubes and basically the, the carbon runs all the way through it and makes it extremely strong in tension when you pull on it, like there's downforce, but it also takes a little bit of a bend. So it can take a hit and then come right back. So that's one of the main reasons. So if you ever go off track, something like that, and this hits a hits curbing or hits a bump or something, it can take a little flex and then come right back. So that's the point of these. So the other end then is how to use them. You know, we needed to come up with a way to use a carbon rod like this um, or a structural fiberglass rod. So what we did is we made our own collet system because this is really the only way that we could think of to connect to this rod. So we made this collet system. This is completely custom. This is something that we've designed. And we made this out of stainless steel. It comes with two parts. It's got the nut side of the collet and then the actual um, taper end is inside of there that actually tighten it all up. So we came up with these so that we could actually facilitate this rod. Reasonably, these rods are made for us, but you could, if you really wanted to use a different rod, um, if this, this one didn't match the car, or you wanted to use something different, maybe something a little bit more flexible or something a little more, more rigid, you could do that. But these rods are made specifically for us to, to match the ID of the actual nut and make the system work extremely well. So that's basically the reason why we chose to do it this way. So I'll show you here how to put them together real quick. So we've had some questions on how tight these need to be. Um, and really what we suggest is doing something like in a vise. So we'll take our splitter support end, which is pretty simple. It's just, you know, a clevis type um, feature and we'll put it in the vise. I'm using a little bit of a paper towel here just to protect it. So we'll tighten it up in the vise. You can leave the nut in um, or you can have it out. So if you take it out for a second and you can slide it on the rod, basically you want to slide it on the rod like this. So you'll see that it slides freely on the rod pretty easily. So when it's actually installed, if you bottom out this rod inside of here, it, there's a little, basically, um, there's a little pocket for it to sit in pretty tightly. So you can actually install the, the nut from the top down like that. And there's, there's about uh, three quarters of inch of adjustment in there um, that allow you to uh, move this up and down slightly before it is basically as tight as possible. So once you've got it in here in the vise, you can start tightening the rod. Now, when you start getting close, it'll still move a little bit. If you take your wrench, your adjustable wrench, or your, your standard 716th or 11 wrench, you put it on there and you can start tightening. And when you start tightening, you can spin it a little bit and you can start feeling it grabbing. And that's the collet feature tightening on the actual rod. It's clamping on the rod. Um, we say, basically I suggest doing hand tight and my hand tight might be a little bit tighter than others, but basically tighten it just like that and now you're good. So once you tighten it well enough, you can actually grab it and it's pretty strong. So obviously I can pull up 
my whole workbench with it. Pretty easy. If you want to make sure that it's torqued right, you can use something like a crow's foot wrench, something along this line. Pretty simple. Use something like a crow's foot wrench, um, put it over your nut, use a torque wrench, and we recommend something along the lines of 20 to 22 foot pounds, and that'll get you tight enough, hand tight like I've just done it, and that'll make sure this rod does not come out. So once you get one end done, you can put it on the car and set up your length and uh, measure your length. Um, basically, we recommend generally going from the, from the top mount here, somewhere on the bumper area, go down, and then just kind of lay it there next to your other mount. You'll get your clevises, your clevis ends that actually mount to the splitter and the vehicle. So they connect right there like that, and there's a little pin. So let it sit on the car, let it fall to where you need it to be basically on the car. And then you can put your other end on it. You can measure for your other end. Now, cutting this rod, it is a carbon rod. It does have um, a glass in it. You know, it's got, it's got fibers in it, but we recommend cutting it with a, some kind of high-speed rotary tool, something like a Dremel or a cutoff wheel. Wear safety glasses, wear respirators, wear everything because this stuff is nasty and you definitely do not want to get it in your lungs. Please wear the safety equipment for that. Once you cut it down to your preferred length, you take your other end and you can put that in the vise as well, just like we did before. Tighten that down. You can put your end in, simple as that. Now we recommend lining up both ends so that they're in line like they're supposed to be on the vehicle. So you can line them up just like that. Hold your top end just a little bit in place to make sure that it doesn't move so that they're both in line with each other. And you can, again, you can wiggle the rod just a little bit, see when it's getting tight, and then tighten it on up. If it helps, sometimes the collet actually grabs onto the rod a little bit and it will rotate it. If you start just a little bit out, something like 30 degrees from being in line, and then you tighten it that last little bit, the rod end will end up exactly where you want it and to the right tightness. Again, if you would like, use your crow's foot to uh, get the appropriate torque on that and you'll be good to go. And so here we go, we have this rod. This is our, what would be our longest rod, it's about 20 inches. So the rods are actually 18, but then when you go to the whole centers, you've got about 20. You can cut this down to any length you'd like, so this will work from the 20 inches total down to about four inches, we've seen them quite short. If you need a longer rod than this, um, for some reason we can make them in almost any length you want, but this is our standard. So this will work basically for any rod length you need from four inches to 20 inches. So you don't have to buy those different size turnbuckle lengths, which is one of the other main reasons we went this route. Super easy, you don't have to buy anything special, no extra cost for extended lengths or anything like that, and it comes with all the hardware. And once, it's, once again, when it's done, you sit on a split or something like that, and if you accidentally hit something or a curbing or something, it'll take a quick bend and come right back. But if you actually want to hold it up, it will be strong enough to hold your splitter with all the downforce that you possibly have. So that's about it. If you have any questions on these, let us know. We're, uh, we're available. You can do it on this YouTube video or you can send us a message at Professional Awesome on Facebook or on our Instagram um, or just shoot us an email at sales at Professional Awesome. We'll get you all the info you need about that. And that's about it.